Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of Hashtag Saints Work Podcast coming at you. We are doing this some type of weird way. It is 11.19 p.m. in Sweden. It is 4.15 p.m. in Alabama. Ryan is at work. This is literally the only time that we can get this preview pod in. It's going to be a short preview pod, but we want to do it for our listeners for the upcoming game against the Seahawks. Uh, Saints are one and three. They need a win. They, they are like starving for a win to change the trajectory of their season. And we, can we, before we even talk about the, the, the Seahawks game, like we, we got to talk about the Latavius Murray thing, bro. We have to talk about it. <laughs> Boy, that thing was, that thing was hot on them to the streets. I just, and I didn't even, I didn't even get into it. I, I didn't, but I just think that that move is just such a microcosm of the season. Like, yeah, exactly. It's just the perfect example of you, like, as a front office, again, whether it's bad self-scouting or whatever it is, like, me and you talk about all offseason. They, they needed to upgrade the running back two position. They needed to upgrade all the running back two. All offseason. Bro. Like, we kept hitting on it. Mark Ingram, like, is there for vibes and, and, and shit like that. And it's like, that that's not conducive to winning. Like, it's just, it's just not. And so... Let's be. If we can be completely honest, Mark Ingram and Tony Jones Jr. shouldn't even be on the team right now. <laughs> well, look, I mean, some would disagree with you because they say, "Well, look, Mark averaged you know five yards per carry or six yards per carry against Tampa Bay." Um, it, I don't uh, know. But, but what he what he do against Tampa Bay that changed the game? That, though? that fumble, man. Oh, Two okay. Weeks in a row. All, all Two right. Weeks in a row. What, what did he and do everybody... against the Falcons? That almost changed the game and lost the game for the Saints. Well, look, Mike Triple to say, well, look, he, he's rarely ever fumbled, but <laughs> so it's just, it's just a weird space. The thing, the thing at first, I ain't gonna lie. Like when I saw the Latavius thing at first, I was a bit confused because I didn't know the new rules. Like, uh, like I thought they had put him back on the practice squad, and then he got claimed. But now, you know, the rules are where, like if they bring him up during like a game day. He automatically goes back. Automatically, to the whatever. right? But still, it was just like, like the the narrative that just keeps getting put out is, look, he wanted to leave. He got offered. Um, it was his choice. He was a, basically a free agent, um, so it was his choice to leave. The Saints offered a fifty three, offered to bring him on a fifty three. He had a better opportunity with the Broncos because you know they basically he's basically like a fumble away from being RB one up there. I'm just like, so you telling I, me that the Saints couldn't? I, I just can't believe that if the Saints wanted him, they couldn't have him. I could, I just they, can't. They, they absolutely, they absolutely could have. And what, what's, what doesn't get put out there is that when they offered him, when the Saints offered him a space on the 53, they offered him a space on the 53, but said that they weren't going to uh, guarantee him any pra- any playing time. Exactly. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and that that's what doesn't get reported. Oh. So it's like. So it's like, you know, what the hell is going on? So that's my gripe, but it's not everybody was trying to like everybody was trying to make it seem like, oh, y'all making a big deal out of just Latavius Murray. I was like, it's no. not that. It's not no like the him he's not gonna change the season, whether they have him or not. Like he's not gonna have a impact on the season. He's but not just, gonna have an impact on the season, but like the one just, thing he did against the Vikings, man, is that he was running, getting five and six yards and getting manageable down in distance for the team, and they hadn't had that all season. Hey, I don't. I guess we don't know. What we're talking about Rev. Rev was in my DMs talking about the tape shows that Mark Ingram is a better runner and all that stuff. Stop, I'm like, bro, stop, stop. Okay, bro, you the tape. You're the tape genius. You say what you want, man. Like, I, like I don't care. Like this, I don't like the vibe this stuff gives me. I don't like it. You know, something about it just felt. Like I don't see this happen to other teams. Like I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> I I don't I don't want to spend too much time on it because I know we got to keep this short. But just yeah. just that yesterday, I saw it. I laughed and I was like, it was hilarious. Yeah. And what kept what, about- what just kept me what kept me going was like you know Triplett and Nick and everybody I was just like, oh Saints fans just overacting because you lose. I'm like, man, it's not just that. Like nah. it's not it's not. 
it's the the whole thing. Like you gotta like from a science perspective, we looking at the whole operation how it's running. And this was just one little thing where it's just like, man, what are we doing? Like, what is that going on doing here? You know? I I, I don't know. Um, let's let's get into this the Seahawks game as the Saints about to take on Geno yeah. Smith. Who's playing? Who's playing? That's crazy. That crazy is that, bro? Like, if you would have told me Geno Smith, I don't know. Okay, Geno Smith, Seattle. That's O W. We got a W there. Like, you would have told me that like two months ago. That's a W. But now I'm like, shit. I'm like, damn, can we win this game? <laughs> and I, I texted a friend earlier and I was like, Geno Smith is playing better than both the Saints quarterbacks this season, bro. Bruh. Like, <laughs> bro, has a 108 quarterback rating right now. Geno Smith he look, completed he look, he, 77% he's, he's a, of his passes. He's, he's a better player right now than Russell Wilson is, bro. <laughs> Without question. That's what I'm saying. I no, he's not the best quarter, better than the quarterback ever, but like right now, he is giving you much better quarterback production than Russell Wilson. Like it's, it's, it's Pete Carroll fever dream, bro. Like this is it Pete is. Carroll football all day. He loves it. running game, quarterback not making mistakes. You know, feisty little defense, not real good defense, but you know they feisty. Feisty, um, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This is sure. this is like 2010. This is like the Seattle that kicked us out the playoffs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Back in two thousand ten, and and maybe maybe the f- fans in general aren't expecting to win after the last three weeks, but like it's just it's it's wild because I just I don't I don't want to be a negative Nancy all the time, bro. But like I don't I don't know if they're gonna win to. that game, bro. I'm really trying, I'm really trying. I, I don't know if they go in that game, but before we get into the game. Before I completely forget, uh, yesterday, so for our first raffle of the season uh, for our Patreon people, Patreon members, uh, raffled off two tickets to the Seahawks game this upcoming Sunday. Uh, so shout out to Justin Lenners. I'm probably completely mis- mispronouncing that. Or Lee Ninders um, follows us on Twitter, a Patreon supporter. Um Shot him a DM. He's going to be out of town. He wasn't able to go to the game, but someone in his family, or I believe one of his family coworkers, you know, is going to be able to go to the game. And that's that's just what we're about, man. We're about rewarding yeah. our community, you know, um, and have let, let, have them experience something. And so, hopefully, who who are getting the tickets, they they become a part of our community and start listening to the pod and things like that. Um, so that's the first raffle that we, we're, we're, we've done during the season. Um, I literally just have to transfer the tickets uh, via email to the person. And then there's one more ticket. So there's in, in the Raiders game, there's going to be you, me, Joey, his wife. And then there's one more ticket. There's a fifth ticket that we're raffling off where you're going to be sitting with with us because it's a group of five tickets. So you're going to be sitting with us. um during the Raiders game that we're going to raffle off pretty soon because that, that game's coming up pretty fucking soon. Man. Uh, yeah, it's quick, bro, quick. Um, but what are your general thoughts, feelings um, with the Saints approaching and take on the Seahawks? Well, like most weeks, it's really not even about the Seahawks and what they do. Um, it's about the Saints and what – what they do. Um, the injury report came out today. It looks like Michael Thomas is still out with the toe. Um, Ram check dealing with some things. AK was back limited. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, Jameis was out too. So I think it's the writers on the wall that, you know, it's going to be Andy Dalton time again uh, this week. Uh, and I think they need to try to build off what they did last week, bro. Like, you know, the offense, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it, you know, there was some rhythm to it. Um, things did look, you know, you got Troutman involved, you got Dewan Johnson involved, uh, ball was getting out pretty quick. So if they could try to build on that, um, get Elvin Kamara involved, he would be a major key in this game. We know how he, you know, we, we've seen him perform well against Seattle. Um, so I think if they could just build on that, I think they have a chance because defensively, I 
I think, you know, the Saints can, can even though Geno, Geno has played, you know, pretty well, I think they can bottle him up. I mean, he, he faced a, a terrible Lions defense this past week. So yes. the Saints, Saints defense got a nut up. <laughs> they got to put, they got to nip that in the bud. They can't let Geno come in there and slice him up, man. Lattimore and, and DK in round two. Ooh. He, it's funny because after that, that one play against them lot against the Seahawks last 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 season, like he pretty much took DK out the game. But you know, something that's been like a recurring theme, especially in that game that took place last season, is DK kept getting under his fucking skin by being like being a little you know. And I, I think one of it led to like a 15 yard on sportsmanlike penalty. Sure did. So Marshawn has to keep his emotions in check in this game. He might be has a little tight. To. It might be a little tight this week after last week. I'm saying uh, JJ hitting him with that with that Iverson step. <laughs> oh, bro! <laughs> with that, uh, hit him with he, that AI step. He has shut him down all game, right? <laughs> okay, so dumb, bro. man. Quarterback's hard, bro. Quarterback's it's hard, so man. I feel hard. bad for it too because that's all everybody's talking about, man. But the, it, which which I get, like everything he did from like quarter one through three, just it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Bro. So, like you said, he has to keep himself in check. So, like you, and the great point you're making is is him being maybe annoyed or, or tight that he gave up that play that it didn't cost him. Like it didn't. Uh, I don't want to say it cost him the game, but it was a huge play to give up in that time. Yeah. It may it may have cost him the game. Um, <laughs> Among other things. Among other things. But it was a big, big um, here, Here's a matchup that, if you're a Saints fan, you should go in, go in feeling absolutely thrilled about, uh, like, it, it, are we going to see a dominant performance by, by two first against hmm. Charles Cross, a, left, a rookie left tackle? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, maybe. Maybe not. And I think – Defensively for this game, if you're the Saints, if you're, Den- if you're Dennis Allen, you, to your best ability, try to shut down Seattle's run game because you know that's what they love to do. And you put the game in Geno's hands. And if Geno can slice and dice your, your secondary, it, it it cook, then it's just, it's just, just not in the cards for you that day. Just not right. in the cards. Uh, no question. Not. And, look, I mean, I'm, I thought Davenport played his best game this season, uh, this past week. Um, so hopefully he's turning up. What I want? What is Peyton Turner doing on the injury list, bro? I mean, he played like twenty-two snaps. Talk about his chest. He hurt your chest. With twenty-two snaps. <laughs> you talk about Peyton Turner. You you sound more and more annoyed each time, bro. bro. Like, why? How, how are you injured? One play. Oh. Show me one play. Okay, he blocked that punt. What that was? I mean, that field goal. Yes, great play. That's it. Like he did nothing, bro. <laughs> and and I was scrolling Instagram this morning. You know how they put put stuff on your feed algorithm. So Jermaine Johnson's Instagram comes up when he when I don't even know I don't even know who the Jets played against. This I don't know. It's off my head. But there's this one play where he just. Just abuses the right tackle, bro. Mm. Just, just, oh, that, that get off like the, oh, just a bend, and it leads to a sack. And I'm just like, we can't have that. We just, we mm. can't have it. It's not in the card, bro. Not in the cards. Man, just that speed rush, you know. That's one thing they all like. And then, you know, I mean, Cam Jordan, you look, he's getting long in the two. So they really banked on that, you know. On that uh, two first Davenport and who first Bang they on turn it, bro. coming through and it's just it's just not, not it's not there. <laughs> and we 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 talked about it in the off season. It was it was that's that's a tricky thing to bank on. It's a tricky thing to bank on, and it's it's not working. Um, and they protected part- Geno Smith pretty well too. He got what six mm-hmm. six on the season, so you know they've been doing a good a good job along with him. He's been getting the ball out. Quick. Um, you know, he, you know, he can scramble. He's not a runner, but you know, he could, you know, rush and get you know three, four yards if he needs to and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting, man. Uh, can we 
can you talk about this? Speak so. I I talked about like the Latavius thing a little bit. I got I got another, another grievance. If Deontay Hardy doesn't want to return kicks or kickoffs, or if he does, he's fumbling them. What like can we not make him inactive and just? Find someone else to return balls, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's aggravating, bro. Like, yeah. so shout out to our dude Dave, who, who is in Wales. He was at the game. Dave was lit, bro. Dave was lit up, <laughs> which is funny because if you ever follow me in our Discord or on Twitter, just the most, or even doing the live streams, bro, just composed, just you know, got his shit together. Nah, bro, that, that Vikings game day was lit. And every time something happened with fucking Deontay Hardy, he was lighting his ass up, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, special teams as a whole, honestly, though, man. Like, special teams have been bad. Bad, man. Everything from Will Lutz missing, missing field goals to uh, field goals and extra points getting blocked. To you know, uh, not recognizing big, fake punts, big punts, um, not no return game and kickoff or punt. It's just been bad, man. Like Rizzy, whatever his name is, man. Like you mm-hmm. know, bro. But you know that comes back to details. You know, you have to work on special teams. The great, the good teams in the NFL have good special teams. They work on it. Yep. It's a focus. Um, but you know, during the during the off season, I mean, during training camp, you know. Uh, DA was bragging about how they were finishing practice early and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't know. I guess they didn't need to work on it. Like, you know, I shouldn't laugh, but like after how this season started, when you said that and just like, in context, <laughs> that's that's just where they were right? mentally. They were like, oh man, we're so good. We don't even need to finish this whole allotted time for practice. We could. What, you know? what, what is something we that was on our radar before training camp during OTAs? Uh, I mean, DA, like, it's just, you know, his whole, like, would he, would he be able to, you know, be that, I guess, be that leader, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was a big one, but this is, like, this is, like, right during OTAs, if you remember. Do you remember when, when there was, like, a large number of people not at OTAs, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Tyran was in there, and- AK one there, and they were just on our radar, just a little bit, bro. It was just like a little bit. I, I do, I make... do really believe it. Just talking to some people, I do really believe that he took the opposite approach of Sean Payton mm-hmm. as a more of like, look, hands off. I'm a little more laid back. I'm gonna trust you to get the job done, and this and that. And then you gotta think about it, bro. He been in that building what 15, 14 years. You know, he Long knows time. all the systems, so he's been an employee. And when you get when you promote from within and you become the boss, it's like you know they still look at you like you their peer. You know what I'm saying? They weren't looking at Sean Payton like he was their peer. He was the boss. Mm. So I I still think Da is suffering from that you know that issue of still being looked at as a peer. But he got to he got to lay down the law, man. I don't know how you do that because you don't want to come off fake. Well, here's the, here's the thing though. They tried to do that when they traded CD Deuce, did they not? I think that just looks stupid. <laughs> but like, but in 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 some way, that was their way of trying to lay down the law. Like, if right. you're not going to listen, if you're not going to, you're going to be a quote unquote malcontent, then we'll just. And that's with ass. players, and that's with players. But what about coaches? You know what mm. I'm saying? Mm. But they need discipline too. You know, so you know, they need accountability. One of the biggest questions that get asked when you're like a frontline employee and you're interviewing for a supervisor job. I've had these, I've had these interviews. They'll ask you when you become a supervisor, you've been coworkers and on the same level with these people for so for so long. Now you're going to be there, potentially be some of their bosses. How are you going to ensure that you can manage them when for the longest time you guys have been on the same level. It's literally a standard question that gets asked to you when you're trying to become a supervisor. And 
you you said it right. Like it's just it, it has to be. I'm, I'm not your DC anymore. I am the guy. But I think I think more than anything, it's just like the the. I just feel like there's a lack of attention to details of the game. Yeah. And if you have a lack of attention to details of the game of football, you, we've seen for three games how that can cause you to get beat. Yeah. And that's all I've seen so far is with the mm. Saints. It's just not lack of attention to detail, uh, lack of discipline. So, you know, and those things can be cleaned up, man, but that, that shit has to be, like, ingrained, you know. And I thought I think they thought it was de facto ingrained. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like just yeah. Ooh, automatically apart. You, you, and, you're getting it on the head to, right now. Yeah, but you have to constantly, you know, you have to constantly reinforce that, you know, in your organization. Whether that's you know any that's any organization, not just sports, but especially yep. the sports team. But that thing, DA is taking the approach. That, Look, this is a veteran team, veteran staff. We know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like we know how to get it done. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> like no. Obviously, it don't work like that. No. Um, let me ask you this. So, but it's, it's the Seahawks game is going to be good. You're going to have, have yeah. Marshall on DK. Uh, he, oh, yeah. We didn't talk about him a lot, but the antibodies had a great game against. I mean, when the Saints weren't in zone and they went to Adam Thielen and Paulson and Debo, the antibodies on Adam Thielen, he didn't get nothing, bro. Mm. They had a great game. So you're going to have. Paulson Debo lined up probably on on um, Lockett. Yep. Like you can make this, on Laddie. This should be a game the Saints should be able to win, bro. They 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 should be able to win this game, and I just don't know if they will. I really I I, I don't know. Rashad Penny, uh, I think he's healthy. Uh, he's you know he's he's running well you know he's averaging six yards per carry. Oh, uh, one of the one of the few players that we were talking about in the offseason that the Saint Shoshana sign as they're running back. Hey, hmm. Just just out hmm. there, out there. Bro. <laughs> so, so what's so so what's Cordero Patterson from Longest Todd too, bro? Like, oh man, yeah. So you know, I think I, like you said, man. I think they should win this game if they if they play the game. If Andy Dalton come out there. Got a good script together. He getting the ball to AK. If Mike Thomas, well, I don't think Mike Thomas will be back. Um, it's hard to say right now, um, but it just feels like it's gonna be another week off with that toe. Oh, is it turf toe? I don't know. Um, but I feel like if you get AK back, that's just such a big piece. Huge, it's such huge. a big piece, man. Um, you got uh, you know, you got Chris Olave, Trey Quan. Um, Kevin White season back, baby. Let's go. <laughs> you know, it's still got juice. You know, you this is enough to get it done against that defense because that defense is not great. It's it's it's, it's, it's kind of like Carolina Panthers. This movie, the sweat equity defense. You know, they they get average, yes. but it, they're not set. good. You know, what I'm saying Perfectly they're not set. good. So, so before we wrap up. Thanks winning on Sunday. I, I I will be in the air coming back to the states. Um, so I this is like I've I've missed two Saints games Man. this year. The, the Panthers yeah, game, back to normalcy, bro. I know, bro. <laughs> just, just been in a literally in a diff, different world, different schedule. I'm eight nine hours ahead, depending on where you are in the state. It's just been different, bro. Just been different. Um. So shout out to Joey. He's going to be uh, uh, doing the the streaming and the Discord on Sunday. We'll be recording the Sunday um, post or post game pod because I get, I get back like at five, so we'll record it Sunday night at some point. Um, it will be good to get back to normalcy, and I'm glad that I'll be back for Bengal Saints next Sunday, the following Sunday. Um, and we can get all our reaction to that fucking blood, 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 blood bath that's going to be on our hands. Um, but yeah, I, I, Saints, Saints going to win, bro. I got the Saints winning, man. We need some positivity, man. The city freaking out. 
They, you know, Saints fans, they moving on to the Pelicans, bro. They Pelicans, like, <laughs> Pelicans season, baby. People in the Discord was like, yo, when, when the hashtag <laughs> Pelicans Twitter podcast. I got to step up my NBA coverage, man. We're going to change to the Pels, Saints, <laughs> Pels Twitter podcast, whatever. Um, You got them winning? Yeah, I got them winning, man. They're going to win this game, bro. Okay. If they All don't right. do, ooh. <laughs> Bro, I don't Because if they don't win this one, then you got the Bengals coming Bengals. this week. Oh man. <laughs> do you do you still agree that there's nothing that can happen this season that'll cause DA to lose his job? Um if they went like one and was it one and sixteen? <laughs> like if they say they won three games this season. <sighs> three games with that talent. And you don't even get to keep that pick? Man. That's tough, bro. <laughs> That's a tough one. Tell me, even going to have to, Gail Benson going to have to sit down like, damn. I don't even think it's a Gail thing. It, it, it all boils down Mickey. to Mickey. Yeah, Mickey. All boils down to Mickey. And and because so because you got to look at it. What have they been telling us all offseason? Why they go with DA? Continuity. Familiarity. It's part of the family. Love them. So you, so so what you what you saying after one season? Like, oops, fuck that. We messed up. Like, but to to that point, say whatever you want to say about him as a head coach. Cliff Kingsbury had the nuts to say, you know what? We drafted this guy. They, y- y'all drafted this guy in the tenth, oh, tenth overall, and Josh Rosen last year. This dude is terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna go out, go out and get my guy first overall in this draft now. Ha- Bad head, head coaching decisions, whatever. But to do that, one goes against the grain, as most decision makers make in the NFL. Two, it takes a lot of fucking balls. So to me, like this would be the equivalent, or that would be the equivalent um, yeah. of firing DA. Because, but on the flip side, with with the talent that's on this team. I I get it. People want to say injuries. Te- teams all over the NFL get injured all the fucking time. Like you got to stop throwing out the injury thing to me. Like the talent that's on this team for them to like at that point, it's not even underachieving. Like that's a disaster. Yeah, that's they a won disaster. every game. That like that means that everything's going bad. Like at that point, like I don't know how you could or would justify keeping him as head coach. I don't either. I don't either. But I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if it'll come to that. So okay, I'll ask you this because I know you got to this at work. Um, what is your win total expectation for this team as it currently is? Well, it, well, it ain't ten no more. It was ten. No, I kept no, it no. for the long. But I think, uh, man, it's hard. It's really hard to project this team because I have yet to see a game that they won, even though yeah. they beat the Falcons. Yeah, but like a, a game where I won, where you watch the game is like, oh, they won. Like they beat this team. I've yet to see that, so it's so it's like it's hard for me to say, man. But I'm gonna go ahead and say six wins. They win six <laughs> games this game. Yeah, I was thinking that's six to seven is where I'm at right now, bro. Six to seven, man. Six that, that's seven, that's seven. that's just pathetic. <laughs> it is, I kind I hope it's six though because I wanted to be like one less than seven. But like you know. the the bigger question is. If if we're saying six or seven, like for me at that point, just win three and just start just start this shit over from scratch. Like, because if you, if they go six and seven, that that could be like, oh okay, whatever, we can bring the eight back. But it, like, that's exactly me, what happened. That's exactly, exactly what happened. That's what I'm saying. But like <laughs> at that point, just just go out and win three. And I know our numbers are gonna be bad, but at least you completely rip it over. You you start from scratch. You're not trying to do, oh, we're just bringing someone that you know. Go build off what Sean Payton. Like you got. You got to find. You got to go out and find the guy. And it's hard. I get it. It's hard. It's hard to find a good fucking head coach or a great head coach. It's really it's fucking hard. hard. But I, I think you know Loomis. He would have to put himself back in the shoes of Mickey Loomis in you know the winter of two thousand six, where you know Katrina had just blew through New Orleans, and. He had to find a head coach, and he didn't get a head coach that he knew. He he had no history with Sean Payton, you know, wasn't buddies with Parcells or nothing like that. He just he went and scouted coaches and took a you know took a fly on Sean Payton, who you know who had hoped he was going to Green Bay, but Green Bay. didn't get that job, you know. So Loomis would have to put himself back in them shoes and just go get the best coach you can get 
and stop worrying about continuity and, and who we know, politics, family, who, who's a part of the, you know, who's been a part of the program. Just go get the best goddamn head coach. Leave that nepotism shit alone, man. Leave it alone. Um, I tweeted this, I think a day after the the Vikings game, and it's, it was an important tweet because it, it dawned on me. I'm like, damn, Brian David got the Giants to three and one. That's crazy. The Giants, bro, with Daniel Jones, and he's not even playing well. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and these niggas is one and three. They're that, figuring that, out ways to win and not not figuring out ways to lose. It's to lose. You know why? Because that's what good hedge coaches do. So, yep. yeah, all right, let me let me let me chill off. Let me. Okay, so you got the you, you got the win and you got them yeah, beating gonna, the Seahawks. I'm, I'm they gonna beat the Seahawks, man. No, bro, I don't, I don't think they'll beat the Seahawks. I need a win, man. I need some number. I need some exciting Saints fans. I, I need some. I do, bro. Like I want to see. Uh, I want to see what play was it. You know what I miss? I you know woke up in in London and woke up after what was it? Monday Night Football it was Tuesday. Walk, look on, see Debo Samuel just making plays against the Rams, bro. Just mm. like, can we get that back? Like, can we just get a play Please. like that? Just, just something similar to that. Like, I just. I just need it, bro. Just, I just want it. Just make, cause even it's one thing to be losing, and like you having fun when you losing a little bit, like oh, but you get like, but like losing and just looking bad when you lose, like that's the worst type of fucking losing, bro. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's worse. Anyway, again, shout out to Justin, who was our first first time we've done this, but our first winner for the raffle. We're gonna get those tickets over to your friend. Like, if you listen to this podcast, these these are just the things that are included when you are part of the community. Point blank, period. Part of the family. This is what's included with it. Um, we will be back. The great, great thing about our community now is it's like self running. Like we don't even need to. Like, I just you know you peek in the Discord, man. That thing just rolling on its own. On its own, man. The fact that you know I haven't been able to help with the games what, since. It'll be three Sundays in a row. Yeah. I haven't been able to help with them because I've been over, overseas traveling for two of them. And I've been, I was at the Vikings game and it's just, it, it's, it is, it's, it's beautiful. I do want to give another quick shout out to everyone in London that I interacted with. Um, so many amazing people, absolutely. So many amazing people, Daniel, Michael, David, um, Alex meeting Eric, who's not, from London, he's from Louisiana, but he flew over to London. Um, saw our dude Jordan, um, J Mu. Just yeah, like how crazy is that, bro? Like it's crazy, just just wow. Man, look at Jordan um, out there, man. <clears throat> it was just also completely separate from Saints related. It was so heartwarming to see how many people of our color. In London, mm, that's dope. We we were all we were all over the place, all right? It was all over the place. Um, seen a seen a whole bunch of you know black people who were in Paris who took the train over to London just like we did. Tons of them. Like, there was tons at our hotel in London. We were just it was it was amazing, man. Because it's just like because when you think of like traveling overseas, international. Like it's such a endeavor, money wise. You know, you gotta have money. You got that passport, and like typically, you just historically, like that's just it's just not something. You know, it's just not something that we get to enjoy as Black people in this country. Right. I'm not saying not. I'm not saying all of us, but for some of us, it's just not a thing that is accessible. Right. But being there, and I just keep kept seeing people like us, and I was like, man. That's what's fucking up, man. Like that, that's what's amazing. Um, so that was really, really, really dope to see. Um, whole experience was dope. So hopefully, hopefully those the Saints ever go back to London, play a game. I don't know how. We went we might have to start a completely separate GoFundMe that's a, a, a side for the patriotic to get you to London, bro. <laughs> uh, but I just you got to experience it, man. It's, it, it was a truly, truly amazing oh, experience. Man, I, I have to. I must. Go going to pubs, and just because we have a fucking podcast, not, didn't pay for a single drink the whole time I was there. 
Wow. Not, not a single drink. Treat it like family, man. Um, so I just want to give that that shout out. Um, hopefully the Saints pull it out on Sunday. We shall see. Because um, if not, Monday, then, then, tweet, then Twitter report is going to be out, bro. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're going to be out, bro. All right. <sighs> we're we're going to get out of here. Uh, we try to keep it short episode. We'll be back Sunday evening recapping the Seahawks game. Hopefully we'll be recapping a win. Um, shout out to everyone in our community uh, who is just part of the family. I just want to give a quick shout out to Joey G, um, Elise, uh, yeah. e- everyone who everyone who helps in terms of the community. And in less than like 30 days, we are having the first ever hashtag Saints Twitter podcast VIP party on the 29th of October for the Raiders game. It is Whew, 34 people are, are, have RSVP. Man. Thir- 34. We need more food, man. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> listen, I'm about to change that order. When I get back to the States, I got to call Blue Oak and say, hey, we <laughs> need some more food, bro. <laughs> um, but it's, it can't wait. Can't, can't, can't wait. Um, so, and the only way that you can be at the party you, you got to be Patreon. If you're not Patreon, Patreon, don't even don't even try to sneak in. We're gonna have some type of like security guard situation where like we will ask for your email. We'll have a list of all our Patreons. <laughs> Just post it, bro. <laughs> it's not on the list. <laughs> don't fucking get go outside of go. there. Gotta go. Anyway, thank y'all for the support. We we appreciate it. We, we really do. We'll be back Sunday with that brow. Peace.